What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to continue talking about Fenwick trees. So this is going to be a longer in-depth explanation about Fenwick trees. And I'm going to actually draw out the Fenwick tree with you guys. But basically, Fenwick trees are used for range queries. Same thing as the segment But the reason why we use Fenwick trees is that segment trees are a little bit more complicated. They take O of 4n space complexity. Fenwick trees are less complicated and they're more easily to implement. Range queries, what I mean by range query, I mean by when you have like an array and you want to sum up the values between indexes 1 to 4 or like 2 to 5 stuff like that so i kind of explained most of this back in the other video if you want to check it out it's in one of the cards down below is my previous video of finwick trees but let's talk about let's actually draw out a finwick tree itself but let's talk about the time complexities of finwick trees because i didn't do that in the last video so finwick trees it takes o of n space so if i have n elements right it would take o of n to create it it takes log of n to search in a finwick tree so that's good it takes log of n to update an element in a finwick tree which is also good. It takes n log n time to create a Fenwick tree. Here I have an array indexed from zero, and I have three, two, negative one, six, five, four, negative three, three, seven, two, three. And here, what I did was I basically drew the tree here. So I have 11 nodes in this tree, which is one more than the uh, corresponding values of the array that we're given. So in our tree, zero is a dummy node that doesn't really store anything, any information of our whole array. The rest of the nodes, nodes one to 11 does store information. It stores the prefix sum of the different ranges. So that's what it does. Let's talk about why the these nodes one, two, four, eight, ten 10 are the children of zero. So why is zero the parent of two, four, eight, and 10? So let's look at this. If I look at the binary representation of two, base 10 is going to equal one, zero. So two to zero, two to one. Yeah. And it's base two. And if I were to flip the rightmost bit, so the rightmost set bit is this, this one, this value of one, right? This is this, this value is the one that's set. If I flip it, now it becomes zero. I get zero, zero, which represents two, zero, right? So that's why that's our parents there. If we look at four is binary rep representation. So four is binary representation is one, zero, zero, right? This rightmost set bit is one. And if I were to flip it, and it becomes zero, it becomes zero, 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 and that's equal to zero. All right, so that's why zero is the parent of four. Zero is the parent of two. So that's why we drew zero as the parent of two and four. And we could go on with eight and 10. Let's do like at eight. Eight's binary representation is zero, zero, eight, two, which then it equals to, if I flip this rightmost bit, flip this, this is gonna become zero, 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 which is equal to zero. So that's why zero is the parent of eight. And let's look at 10, zero, one, zero. If I were to flip the rightmost set bit here, I would get, uh, if I flip this rightmost set bit here, this one, to go back to zero, right? I'll get uh, one, zero, 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 base two. And this is equal to eight in base 10. That's why eight is a parent of 10. So as you can see here, it, this eight is the parent of 10. Like 10 is a child of eight. So that's why that's the case of here. Let's look at 11. Binary representation at 11 is one, zero, one, one, right? Base two. And if I flip the rightmost set bit, flip this, this is going to get me one, zero, uh, one, zero, which is 10. And that's why 11 is a child of 10. And if you keep going, so on and so forth, you're going to get all of the, and draw it out, you're going to get all these values, okay? So basically, to get the parent of whatever index I'm at, so whatever node, for whatever node is, I want to get the parent, what do I do? I basically just write out the binary representation of the index, then I flip the rightmost set bit, and that will be the parent. So if I want to get the parent of 10, what do I do? Write 10 in its binary representation, find the rightmost set bit, flip it, that gets me eight, eight is the parent of 10. So I, you could do that for the rest of these nodes, okay? So now that we understand where we got the parents of each individual children and their corresponding indexes, let's, let's fill this tree up with the prefix sum information, okay? So guys, before we get started about generating the prefix sum, let's note that any number can be represented as a power of two. So if I have 10 here, I could represent 10 as a power of 2. 2 to the 3rd plus 2 to the 1st. 
right? 8 plus 2. 8 plus 2 is equal to 10. What about 11? I could represent 11 as a power of 2. How do I represent 11 as power of 2? Uh, you could have it as 2 to the 3 third plus 2, uh, 8 plus 2 plus 1, 2 to the 0, right? 8 plus 2 plus 1. That's a power of 10, okay? You could have 5 as a power of 2. 2 to the second plus 2 to the 0, okay? Why is that? Because 5 is equal to 4 plus 1, which is 5, okay? So that's why any number can be represented as a power of 2. So basically, the Finwick tree uses the idea of having the powers of 2 as a parent to compute its next prefix sum, right? So the parent of 10 and 8, it uses this value to compute its prefix sum of the next value. Let's start doing this now. The first value of the node 0 is a dummy node, so it stores 0. Okay, so that's why its prefix sum is zero. All right, let's start at one now. One represents one is equal to zero plus two to this is zero, which is one, right? Zero plus one is one. Reason why I'm saying zero is because zero is the parent of one. I'm representing this as a parent, okay? So what am I saying here? Starting from parent zero, the sum of the next one element, two to zero, is gonna be stored at index one. So what does that mean? My prefix sum of zero, the parent of zero is zero. Ne sum of next one element from index zero is three. Zero plus three. So that's why one is going to, uh, at index one, at array index one, I'm going to store zero plus three. Because from this element of zero, the next one element is going to be itself. So I'm going to store three. So I'm also going to indicate that the range from zero to zero is gonna be stored at index one. So I'm gonna put zero to zero. The range of zero to zero is gonna be stored at index one. From zero to zero, I'm gonna store at index one. All right, guys, so now two. What can two be represented in terms of the parent of zero? It's zero plus two to the one, okay? So now from the sum, the first two elements from the starting point of our parent of zero, I'm gonna sum that and store it in the index of two. So what is the sum from two values from our first value of in index zero? Three plus two, right? Because that's the first two values at that I'm summing from the start of our parent of zero. So that's gonna give us five. Now what is the range that I'm summing from? Zero to one. That's what I'm summing from. So I'm gonna put that here. That's the range that I'm summing from. Now let's look at three. Three is equal to, what is three equal to including the parent? Well, three's parent is two, so that's two to the one plus two to the zero, okay? Okay, so from this representation, two and one, starting from index two, what is the next sum of the next one element? All right, two to the zero is one. So what is the next sum of the next one element? Well, starting from index two, the sum of the next one, one element is just going to be negative one, okay? Because I'm starting from two and the next sum of the next for one element is just gonna be negative one. So I'm gonna put negative one here. So what is the range that I'm summing from? Okay, what is the range I'm summing from starting from index two? Well, to get to negative one, it's gonna be the range of two to two because I'm starting from two and I'm ending at two. So that's why I'm gonna put two to two here. All right, let's look at four. What is four's parent? Four's parent is zero. So I put zero plus, uh, how do I represent four in terms of zero of its parent? That's two to the second, okay? So now, Starting from index zero, what is the sum of the first four elements? That's what I'm gonna store at index four. Okay, so now the sum of the first elements starting from zero, starting from zero, the first sum of first four elements, one, two, three, four, from here to here, okay? That's the sum of the first four elements. So that's gonna be equal to three plus two plus negative one plus six, 10. So I'm gonna put 10 at four. The range that I'm summing from first four elements starting from zero is gonna be between zero to the index three. That's what I'm gonna put here. So what is five equal? Five is equal to, what is the parent? The parent is four. In terms of representation of two, that's gonna be two to the second plus two to the zero, okay? Because five is equal to four plus one, okay? So now, starting from index four. At index four, what is the first one sum? Starting from index four, so from here. The first, first sum. Okay, from index four. That's just going to be five. So I'm just gonna store five at index five. So I'm gonna put five. And what is the, in terms of the range I'm summing from? That's just gonna be four to four, okay? 
because at index four, the range I'm summing is just gonna be itself. So index four is gonna be four, two, four. Let's look at six. What is six parent? Six parent is four. We represent that as two to the second. Two to the second plus two to the first, okay? Because it's four plus two is equal to six. So starting at index four, right? What is, what is the sum of the next two elements, right? The sum of the next two elements. The reason why I'm looking at next two elements is because that's what this is equal to, right? Next two elements starting at index four. What is that? So starting at index four, that's going to be five plus four, and that's going to give us nine, okay? So I'm gonna put nine here. And what is the range between that? That range is gonna be, be between four to five. Let's look at seven. What is seven? Seven is equal to, its parent is six. So that's two to the second plus two to the first, which is six. Then we need to add one, so two to the zero, okay? So what is the next one element from starting from index six, okay? So starting from index six, what's the sum of the next one element? So starting from index six, our index six is negative three, okay? So index six is negative three. So the next sum of the next one element is just going to be negative three, okay? So that's gonna be negative three. And the range is just gonna be six to six. Okay, so let's look at eight. Starting from eight, eight represents, the parent of eight is zero, so we put zero here, okay? So let's represent eight in terms of its parent is zero. Zero plus two to the third, that will give us eight, okay? So the sum of the values of the next eight elements, two to the third, what is that gonna be? That's gonna be three plus two plus negative one plus six plus five plus four plus negative three plus three. So basically we're summing up from next eight elements starting from zero is gonna be here up to here, okay? So that's gonna be the sum from zero to seven. And then if you put all these values in a calculator, which I'm gonna do right now, that's gonna give us 19. So let's look at nine. Nine is equal to uh, eight plus, let's just put eight plus two to the uh, zero, which is one, okay? I don't feel like writing the binary equivalent of eight, but yeah, because eight is, we got eight from the parent, okay? So now starting from index eight, what is the next sum of the next one element? Okay, so from index eight, the sum of the next one element is just gonna be seven, okay? So that's gonna put seven here. And that's going to be the sum between eight to eight. So we got 10. 10 is equal to eight plus two to the first, okay? because 10 is equal to eight, eight is the parent of 10, so yeah. So now, what is the sum starting from index eight? The next sum of next two elements, okay? So the next two elements is going to be, the sum from starting index eight is going to be seven plus two, which is gonna give us nine. So for 10, we're gonna put nine, okay? So now the next two elements for eight is going to be nine, and that's gonna be the range of eight to nine, the sum between the range eight to nine. All right, now let's look at 11. 11 is equal to 10 plus one, which is two to the zero. Okay, so now the sum of the next one element, what is that? Starting from index 10. Uh, starting from index 10, the next one element is just going to be three, right? Because there's nothing after. We're at 10 right now. The next one element is just going to be three, okay, at index 10. So that's just, we're just gonna put three here. And that's just gonna be the sum between 10 to 10, okay? All right, so that's basically summing up all the values here. Okay, so this is not the most efficient way of creating the tree, but it was a good way to explain to you guys and show you guys and draw it out of what, what I did to create the tree, okay? So let's say I wanna start searching from ranges between zero to five, okay? So where do I start searching first? I should actually start searching at index six because six, as you could see from our node of six, it is the last time where we store an index of uh, four to five, right? So if I wanna start summing for six, I just take the value at index six, which is nine, and this nine is for the ranges from four to five. So then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the parent of six, and the parent of six is going to be four. So I'm gonna add whatever value is at index four, so I add by 10. So now that I add by index four, 
Uh, I'm going to get the parent of 4 now, and that's going to be 0, and the value at 0 is going to be 0, so plus 0. So that's going to give me values of 19. And if you want to look at the ranges, for 9 is 4 to 5, for 10 is 0 to 3. So you're going to have this one is 0 to 0. So then you're going to have uh, 0 to 5. For the, this range is going to be 0 to 5. Okay, so if I draw it out, you could be, look at this 4 to 5, 4 to 5, sum these up. Right? And then if you sum from the parent of 4, which is going to be uh, 0 to 3, so you sum up 0 to 3, and then 0 to 0. So then if you look at this, this whole sum is, is just going to be 0 to 5. If you look at the whole sum, it, it will actually sum up to 0 to 5. So yeah, and to get each individual parent, all you have to do is just flip the rightmost bit that's set for like the bit of 6. I'll just flip the rightmost bit, and that will give me the parent of four and then for four rightmost bit i'll flip it and i'll get the parent which is at index zero so yeah that's how you would get the searching for the sum from zero to five so let's say i want to start uh summing up i want to find the sum between ranges zero to nine so the index value of zero to nine so what do i start looking first i first start looking at index 10 because at index 10 this is index 10 right it has the ranges of eight to nine so that's going to help me find the sum of all the other values from 0 to 9. So what do I do first? I look at the value at index 10. So the value at index 10, at index 10 in our tree is 9. So I'm going to first write the value of nine, uh, the value at index 10 down 9. Then I need to find the parent of the value at index 10. Okay, uh, the value at index 10. So what is the parent of 10? The parent of 10 is 8. So I'm going to sum up the parent, the parent of 10 and sum of the value of index 8. So that's going to be 9 plus 19. So now once I've finished the value at index 8, I'm going to sum the parent of 8, which is going to be 0. And the value at index 0 is going to be 0. So 19 plus 9 plus uh, 0 is going to be uh, 28. And if you were to draw this out, the ranges for 9 at index, uh, at index 10, right? This range is 8 to 9 right at index 10 is the range is 8 to 9 from the, the parent of of the value at 9 of index 10 is going to be 8 and let's look at the value of 8 the ranges of 8 is 0 to 7 so we're going to do right 0 to 7 here and then if you were to draw it out this was 0 is 0 to 0 so basically if you want to draw out this actual sum 8 to 9 would be this here to here right and then 19 would be the sum from 0 to 7 so that's here here to and if you were to sum these two up that will get you to zero to nine right that if you add these two values up this value and this value it will get you zero to nine okay let's say i want to find the range sum between zero to six well what is the zero to six the next value the next value is seven so i'm going to start at index seven okay so index seven is the sum of uh, uh index seven i have negative three and negative three is the range between six to six so now i have to go to the parent what is the parent the parent of seven is six so now i'm going to add the value of six whatever value at index six which is nine so i'm going to plus nine and this is the range of between four to five okay and now i need to keep going up to the parent add to the parent also so what is a parent of ranges of uh, index 6 that's going to be 4 and 4 at index 4 the value of at index 4 is 10 so I'm going to add by 10 and add by 10 and the range at index 4 is 0 to 3 so I'm going to put 0 to 3 and then now I'm, I'm at the parent which is the, the root is 0 okay 0 to 0 so now if you were to sum these up you would get 16 okay so now if you were to draw this out 0 to 3 is this sum 0 to 3 okay and then now 4 to 5 is this sum, which is the 9, 4 to 5. Okay, and then 6 to 6 is just 6. So now if, if you look at this by itself, if you sum all these individual segments up, you get 0 to 6, right? If you add all this value, this segment, this segment, and this segment, you get a range from 0 to 6. So what is the worst case scenario of going through the, this tree? 
The worst case scenario of searching is going to be the height of the tree. And that's going to be at worst case log base 2 of n. So let's go back to the idea of how to get a parent of a certain node, okay, at a certain index. Let's say I want to get the parent of 11. So 11 in binary is 1011. Okay, so remember, to get the parent, the parent of the current node you're at, the current index, you have to set the rightmost significant bit back to zero. So that's 1011. I have to set it to zero, that's 1010, and that gives us 10. But how do I do that? One way to do it is actually just to get the twos complement, and it with the original, and then subtract from the original. So if I want to get the twos complement of 1011, what do I do? I just flip all the bits, so I get 0, 1, 0, 0. I add it by 1, so then I get 0, 1, 0, 1. And then I have to and it with the original. The original is 1011. For 11, the, yeah, the original of, of 11 is 1011, and it with 0, 1, 0, 1. And this gives us one true, true is true, true, false is false, zero of true, false is false, true, false is false. That gives us zero, 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 one. And then now I have to subtract zero, zero, one from one, zero, zero, uh, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one minus zero, 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 one. And that gets rid of this last bit. This last bit now gets set to zero. So that gives us one, zero, one, zero, which base two is going to equal to 10. Okay. From base 2 to decimal, it gives us 10, which is actually the parent of 11. So this is how you do it programmatically. In the program, you just flip all the bits using the not symbol, and then you end it with the original, then subtract from the original. So if you want to do it in a programmatically, that's how you would do it, okay? Because there's no really, there's no real possible way to do it to set the right, to get the right most bit and set it to zero. So that's what you have to do. So the time complexity of getting the parent of a single node in our Finwick tree is going to be O of 1 because it will only take O of one time, constant time to get a certain value, to get a parent of a certain value in our tree, okay? All right guys, so now let's figure out how to do this efficiently in using the parent instead of recalculating over and over again to generate our Finwick tree, okay? All right guys, so what, what I did was I basically just redrew the whole tree and put all the values with zeros, okay? So the same thing, put all the values with the zeros. So a more efficient way to do this is actually to use this function called get next, which is you, you're going to get, whenever you update an element in your Finnwick tree, you are going to propagate the changes to the next node that's going to get affected by your previous change. So that's what this get next does. So to get the next node that is propagated from your change, you would use something called the get next, which is what you do is you take the twos complement, you and it with the original, and then you add it to the original. Okay, so that gets you the next the next node that would get affected by the change that you just made, okay? So let's go back to the original value. Let's start from zero, okay? So zero, the first element that we're gonna sum up from zero is three, right? So we're gonna add three to our first value. So let's change this value to three, okay? But this is just not enough, right? We have to propagate the changes to the other nodes that would get affected by changing this value to three. So let's get the next value of our index of one and propagate those changes to the next value. So our index of one is, if you write it in binary, is gonna be zero, 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 one. Got a number of zeros you tag on, okay. Uh, let's get the twos complement. So that's what, that, what you do is you flip all the bits, one, 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 zero, and then you add one. So then plus one is gonna be one, 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 one. So then now we're gonna end it with the original. So when you end it with the original, you get zero, 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 and then one, okay? Now we're gonna add one to the original. This is the value we have to add it to the original. So we're gonna add this to our value one. So zero, 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 one, plus zero, 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 one. This is gonna give us zero, 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 one, zero two to the one, which is gonna to equal to two. So our next value we're updating is two. So now we're gonna change at index two to become three. So that changed that value, and then we have to propagate the next value of two now. So let's do that. So if you continue doing this function of uh, adding, getting the two's complement, adding it with the original, adding it to the original, um, if you do the next value for two, you'll get four, and then four you'll get eight. So then let's propagate those changes to uh, four and eight so let's just do that so here uh, let's make this so yeah so at eight if we get the next element of eight we actually end up getting greater than 11 so we end there 
Okay, so the next of eight, we end there, so we're not gonna keep going. Propagating. So the amount of time it took to update all the values of three is gonna be O of log of n, if you just count the number of times it took. All right, so now let's look at the next index that we're gonna update, which is one. So at one, we'll look at index two, and then now we're gonna add the values of two to whatever is currently at two. So that's gonna do three plus two is going to be five. So now I'm gonna set this to five. And then I'm also gonna propagate the changes using the next function, which is gonna be four and eight. So this is gonna be five. Okay, and then when you hit eight, eight's next is two, greater than 11, the size of our Fenwick tree, so then we stop. All right guys, so now let's look at index two. Index two is negative one, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go to index three and set the value to be negative one because three is a range of two to two. So that's why we're gonna set three is gonna equal to index three, we're gonna set to negative one. And then we're gonna find the next value of index three. So if you were to actually calculate it yourself and uh, you would actually get four. So three's next is actually four. If you follow this formula, I don't feel like drawing it out again, but three's next is basically four. So then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add negative one to whatever value was at four and update those changes. So that's gonna be negative one plus five, which is going to be four. So we're gonna change this to be four. And then now we have to propagate the changes. Um, four is next is eight. So then now we have to add, also add negative one to the value of eight. So this also becomes four. So now we're gonna go to the next index that we're updating. So last time we did two, we're gonna go to three now. So now at three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the next index, which is four. So now at index four, we're gonna add six to it. So we're gonna change this to become four plus six is gonna be 10. So this is gonna be 10. Okay, and then now we have to propagate the changes to the next element of four, which is eight. The next element of four is eight. So now we're gonna prop add six to eight also. So this is also gonna become 10. So now we're gonna go to four now and we're gonna add the value. So the range of four is, is four to four. So that's at index five. So we are going to just put five at index five. So yeah, because the sum of four to four is just itself so we're gonna put at index five we we'll just put five because that's the value of our array so now if you were to apply the same formula to five five's next is actually six so we're gonna change six to become five also so then six next using this formula is eight so now we have to propagate our changes of six into eight so then now we're gonna add five to whatever value at eight. So it's gonna be five plus 10, which is gonna be 15. So now we're gonna add whatever value at, go to the next index. We're gonna to go to add value at five, right? So now we're going to go to whatever range that it affects. So that's, that'll be six, right? So five, we're gonna to go to six. And we're gonna add whatever value at our index five into six, at index six, right? So then four plus five here, is gonna be nine. So we're gonna change six to nine. All right, so six is next is eight. And so we have to propagate our change from to the next of six. So that will be four plus 15. So that'll be 19. So now we're going to change eight to become nine. Now we're gonna update at index six. If we look down here, uh, index six is why is it five to six? My bad, this is supposed to be six to six. So yeah, six to six, it'll be minus three because it's the value of six. Seven's next is also eight. So now we have to add negative three, prop propagate the change of negative three into the, our next value of eight. So we have to do 19 minus three, which is gonna change to 16. So now we're gonna update seven. Uh, so we're gonna go to index eight and then because there's a value at index eight, we'll just add three, our current value at seven, three to whatever value at eight. So 16 plus three is going to be 19. Now we're gonna add the, update the value of eight, of the index eight. So we're gonna check the index of nine. So index nine uh, is just the sum of eight to eight. So that'll just be seven, okay? So this is gonna become seven because that's our value at eight. All right, so nine, 
next node is 10. So 10 is going to also become 7. So let's change that. All right, so 10's next is outside the range, so we don't update that. So now let's go to, we're going to update 9. So how do we update 9? Uh, we're going to go to the 10th index. So at the 10th index, there's a value here. So we're going to up, we're going to add 2 to the uh, value of at this location. So this is going to be 2 plus not a 7. <clears throat> it's going to be 9. Now we are at the final element of our array of index 10. So we're going to go to 11. And 11 is just 10 to 10. So we're just going to add 3. And then 11's next is outside the bounds. So we don't continue after that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, so now that we're done, um, because to update each element of the in the Finma tree is log of n time, right? A log It takes log of n based on the tree, going down to the tree. And then because we have n elements in our array, it'll be n times log of n to construct our Finwick tree. All right, so let's think about what would happen if I want to update a value. So let's say I'm at index three, and then I want to update it to nine. So, so what am I going to do? Well, the difference between 9 and 6 is 3, so that's a plus 3 difference, right? So that means that for all the values, I'm going to have to ch change it by a difference of 3, okay? So now at, I'm going to go to index 4 in our tree, which is this 4, and I'm going to add 3 to it, okay? So I'm going to add 3 to it, so this is going to become 13. Now I have to update the next value of 4. So that'll be four's next is eight. So now I need to change eight by adding three. Eight, so that'll be 19 plus three is gonna be 22. So now eight's next is outside the range, so it's done. And the amount of time to update an element would just be O of log N because that's the height of the tree to update an element. So yeah, let's go over an another example. Let's say for we're gonna update four. So to do that, let's say we are going to change 5 to 6. So 5 is going to become 6. And that's going to be a difference of plus 1. So now we're going to go up to uh, index 5, right? And we're going to add 1 to it. So it's going to be 5 is now going to become 6. 5 plus 1 is now going to become 6. And then now we have to update the next of 5. So that will be 5's next. 5's next is 6, so now I have to add 1 to 5's next of 6. So 9 plus 1 is going to be 10, so let's change this to 10. And then 6 next is 8, so we have to add 1 to whatever value at 8, so then now we're going to change 22 to become 23. So yeah, so the amount of time it would take to update this whole Finwick tree would be O of log N, because you just go to the next element and change it. So yeah, that's all we have to talk about at Finno Trees. Rate, comment, subscribe. I hope this is a good in-depth tutorial. Check you guys later. Peace.